Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about hfind, which is a tool. It's part of the sleuth kit um, toolkit. Uh, so hfind is used to um, basically make or index hash databases and then be able to search those hash databases for different hashes. Um, that's useful for a lot of different things. For example, we could have a database of hashes um, about either known good or known bad hashes. Um, so let's say known good are maybe files we don't necessarily care about, like a system file. Uh, once we know its hash value, then we can just kind of filter it out uh, so we can't see it. It's not necessarily gone from our case, but we just filter it so we don't have to, it's not in our way while we're doing our investigation. Known bad hash databases could be something like child exploitation or a virus or something like that. If we have the hash value of known data or data that we know is bad, uh, then we can just do a quick search across a system. And if we find that hash value, then we know we found, or we're, we're pretty confident we found the, the bad uh, file, basically. So today we're going to be using um, hfind, which is part of the sleuth kit. Now, if you haven't installed sleuth kit already, um, we're using sleuth kit from the command line. Um, I am on uh, Ubuntu Linux, and I have uh, the Ubuntu Linux command line open. Um, so uh, the commands are basically the same in Windows. It's just the paths will be a little bit different. Okay, so I already have SleuthKit installed. We can test it by doing something like MMLS, which is a SleuthKit uh, MMLS, which is a SleuthKit tool, and then doing dash capital V, and then it should tell you the SleuthKit version that you're running. And I'm currently running four three one. Okay, so the tool that we want is called hfind. So we can do hfind capital V, and then we it ran because it showed us the SleuthKit version. So that's good. We know that it's installed. And if we just do hfind without any arguments, we can find, um, well, first off, you must provide the source hash database location. So we know we need to provide uh, source hash database location, which we haven't created yet. Um, and then you, uh, basically it gives us the usage menu. So hfind, all of the different arguments it takes. Um, so let's talk about a couple of these. Uh, Right, so one that I use quite a bit whenever I'm doing matching is quick mode. So instead of um, uh, whenever we whenever we match, you'll see that it actually prints out the the hash value and whatever the name was of the file um, that was hashed. Uh, if, if we're using an MD5 hash, for example, quick mode will just print out a one uh, if it's found or a zero if it's not found. So if we're trying to script uh, matching hashes. Quick mode is actually really, really useful for scripting uh, these hash matches. Uh, CEDB name, it's to create a new database with a given name. Um, uh, we'll talk about that uh, in a second or, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that in a second. And then A, uh, given hash, uh, adds given hashes to the database. So if you have a, a hash database, you want to add more hashes to the database, you can use dash A. F is the lookup file, uh, file with one hash per line to look up. So you can put all of the hashes you want to search for in the database uh, in a separate file, and then uh, hfind will go through the entire file and tell you which hashes uh, are actually already in the database. And then I, the database type, can create an index file for the given hash database type. Now, I actually use I database type the most because I already usually have a list of hashes that I want to convert into a database. Okay, so I already have a list of hashes I want to convert into a database. And then once I convert that into a hash database, then I want to usually use quick mode to be able to search through the hash database for a, a set of given hashes that I have. So um, yeah, basically, we use dash I to create um, the index, if we already have a list of hashes we want to use, and then we use most of the time dash Q, uh, to do matching, essentially. Okay. Supported index types, NSRL MD5. So we're going to use NSRL MD5 today. Uh, NSRL SHA1, uh, MD5 SUM we'll also do today, and then in case and HK. So basically the ones that I use the most are the first, basically the first three. Um, I, I've used in case before, but I don't use it that often, or I use different tools. So basically these first three I use quite often. 
Okay, so let's start by making um, a list of hashes that we want to convert into a hash database, right? So we're going to start by creating a list of hashes that we want to convert into a hash database. So I will just do MD5 sum, which is a um, MD5 uh, hashing tool uh, that's built into or that's added, included in most uh, versions of Linux. And then I'm just going to feed everything in my desktop. So all of the files in the desktop, I want to hash them, and then I want to output that to, let's call it test.md5, okay? So here I'm creating a hash of all of the files inside my desktop, or on my desktop right now, and I'm piping all of those hash values into a file called test.md5. So if we do that, okay, the, we got some directory errors, but if we do ls... Right, so ls lists all of the files in the current directory, and I can see my test md5. So now I can do cat test md5, and I see my md5 hash value, and then the file that was hashed. And in this case, it gave the full path as well. Okay, so now I want to convert this file cat test md5 or test md5 into the hash database. Now it's not a lot of hashes, but I want to convert this into the, the hash database. So let's clear this out. And I can do, um, now we need to do h find and the type of, uh, well, let's just look at it. So the type here, the supported index types, the type of database or the type of list of files that I have right now is md5 sum. Okay. So right now I want to do I dash I, which is create an index file. And this index file is basically what helps us search over all of the hashes very quickly. So I want to create this index file and the DB type is going to be MD5 sum. So I can do H find, uh, H find dash I MD5 sum. Uh, before I do that, let's look at the directory again. So L LS, I just have the hash list. Okay. So I can do M H find dash I MD5 sum and then test MD5. Now what this is saying is use hfind, create an index out of an MD5 sum hash database type, basically, um, and then the hash database itself. What is the hash database? Test.md5. Okay, so if we hit enter, then it says index created. And if we look, now we have test md5, and this is the database. And then we have essentially the, the index files, the index files for, um, this MD5, uh, test MD5 hash database. So uh, basically these index files are what help us, uh, search very, very quickly over the hash database. We still need the hash database because that's where all the hashes actually are. But, uh, the index file is what helps us to search very quickly. It's what hfind uses. So now let's say I, um, I do, let's say cat test md5. So let's get one of these hashes. I want, let's say highlights PDF. Okay. So I'm going to select this highlights PDF md5. I'm going to copy it. So now we want to match. We want to use hfind with the test md5 database, and I want to see if the hash, uh, if this hash value for highlights is inside the database. So if we search, yeah, okay, it gives us, uh, it gives us the, um, the entry in the database back. So it gave us the hash value plus uh, the full path that was in the original database. If the full path wasn't in the original database or it was just a dash or whatever, um, it would give us that information as well. So this was included in the original database. Okay, so now let's see. Instead of saying 3.5c, let's say 3.6c, and we there is no hash in the database at 3.6c, I'm pretty sure. Um, so we shouldn't get anything. Nothing should come out, okay? So hash not found, right? So it shows us the hash 36C hash not found. So we've changed it 35C. It was in the database. It gives us the, the proper file and then 36C hash not found. Now you can see that this is useful for, you know, a human that can actually read hash not found, but it's not very useful if you want to write code. So that's where, that's where this quick mode comes in. So let's go back. So if I do hfind 35c again, and this is in the database, and I want to do quick mode, I want to do dash q. I think it was dash q, right? 
So hfind-q test md5, which is our database that we've indexed, and then the hash that we, we know is in the index. And what we should get is one. Okay. Now, that's very useful because if we're writing a script that's maybe hashing an image or hashing some files in a directory, then if the hash, if the value returned is one, then the hash matched, so do something with it. If the value that re is returned is zero, the hash did not match, so do something else with it. So if you're used to writing if statements, um, I think you can see that one and zero is much more handy than, um, you know, hash not found or, or whatever. So um, I use dash Q <coughs> quite often whenever I'm trying to script these things. Okay. So, so far we've basically done H find. And if we just type it, um, it shows us some options. Uh, if you do H find dash I and then the database, um, uh, sorry, the type and then the database, then this will create an index for that database. It will create an index for that list of hashes that you have. If you do h find and then the database, test md5, and then the hash value that you want to find, then it will show you a match or not a match. If you do h find dash q, test md5 with a hash, uh, then it will tell you that the hash, basically a one or a zero was the hash found, was the hash not found in the database. Okay, so that lets us very quickly, I mean, hashing, you can hash data really, really fast or quite fast. So this lets us hash things very quickly and then use this to be able to filter things out or find things that are very interesting. Okay, so that was uh, using MD5 sum. Now I'm going to go back. I've downloaded the NSRL from NIST, and this is basically a, a database. It's this NSRL file.txt. Uh, this is basically a database. Let's see if I can just do RL file. So I'm listing just the top portion of uh, the NSRL file.txt. This is a very, very, very large uh, database um, of uh, hashes of files that are known to basically not be very interesting. Uh, files that we can mostly safely ignore. There are some things like, uh, I think, hacker tools that are included, but um, mostly, really, these are things that we don't really care about that are kind of like default uh, files inside uh, operating systems or, you know, yeah, comes with programs or whatever. So these are tend to be files that we can safely filter out or safely ignore. Um, now, we don't necessarily use this to delete data from our case. We use it to filter it out so we don't see it. But then we could, if we need to, uh, show the files uh, and add them back into our investigation if we actually need to. Now, look at what we have here. We have, uh, first off, the SHA-1 of the file. Uh, we have an MD5 hash of the file. We have a CRC32. We have the file name, file size, product code, op system code, and special code. So basically, uh, the op system code, special code, the, well, the op system code is for the operating system. Product code is whatever product uh, the file came in. So for example, this apparently JPEG images came in some program. They were default images inside a program. So they were, um, you know, included. So we would have to look up what the op system code and product code is here. Uh, the file size, uh, yeah, file size is just file size, file name. Uh, we can see, notice there's no file path. Um, CRC 32 is just a, uh, basically a small check, um, yeah, it's just a small check, basically. And then what we're interested in today is MD5 and potentially SHA-1, but basically MD5. So we'll do MD5 right now. So um, I'm going to clear this out. And I have, let's do hfind again. And I have basically NSRL MD5. That's what I, that's the database that I want to make, or that's the index that I want to make. So I have, uh, if we do ls, I have this NSRL file. And it is a large file. Let's do ls-lha to list some um, uh, more details about the file. So if we look at NSRL file, we can see that it's 13 gigabytes, right? It's a big, it's a big file with a lot of hashes in it. Um, remember, we use these to kind of filter out what we don't want to see. They're not really interesting files. Um, so I want to make a database of this NSRL file.txt. Uh, so we can do h find dash i nsrl md5 because i'm going to index 
the MD5 portion of this NF NSRL file. Okay. Then we type NSRL file. We actually give it the database. So here we have hfind-i to create the index. The index type is NSRL MD5. And then the actual database is NSRL file.txt. Okay. So now we can hit enter and it's going through an indexing and I'll let that run. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but we'll come back whenever it's done. Okay, so that index, uh, I mean, I, I skipped ahead, but it took about, I would say, maybe four or five minutes on my on my system. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it doesn't take a long time to index, but it does take some, some I'd say, power, I guess. So, uh, let's see, let's go back and do, let's do head. So now if I search, let me grab this hash value. So I'm just taking one of the hash values to see if we can find, um, see if we can actually find it. So now we can do uh, h find instead of dash i, I'm going to do dash q. So in kind of quick mode, right? So let me let me clear this out. So h find dash q, and then the the database is nsrl uh, file dot text, and then uh, the hash that I want to find is this one okay so if i hit the enter okay we got a one remember this is quick mode so it's going to be one is found if we change this to b zero okay so we know that the hash with this with a b is not in the database okay so uh this is a way the nsrl uh, hash list is a very very common list that we use in a lot of different tools uh, the next one of the next videos i'm going to make is about um, autopsy and including a hash database a known good hash database in autopsy um, and this is one of the first steps we need to create an index we need to um, we need to create it sorry a hash database uh, and that hash database needs to be indexed. Uh, so that's it for using hfind from the command line. Thank you very much.